Learning Objectives At the end of this topic, you will be able to Define circles and its related terms A review Analyze angles subtended by a chord at a point Analyze perpendicular from the center to a chord Illustrate circle through three points Understand equal chords and their distance from the center Introduction if you look around, you can see many objects in daily life which are round in shape, such as a table, cup and saucer, table fan, basket, clock, etc. In a clock, you might have observed that the second hand goes around the dial of the clock rapidly and its tip moves in a round path. This path traced by the tip of the second's hand is called a circle. Do you know circle is the only shape that can roll or fly freely? Although a circle is a simple curve, it has many attributes, concepts associated with it. In this lesson, let's learn about circles, other related terms, and some properties of a circle. Now let's review circles and its related terms. Take paper, compass, and pencil. Fix a pencil in the compass. Put its pointed leg on a point on a sheet of paper. Open the other leg to some distance. Keeping the pointed leg on the same point, rotate the other leg through one revolution. This forms a circle. How did you get a circle? You kept one point fixed at A and drew all the points that were at a fixed distance from A. Using this depiction, we define a circle as the collection of all the points in a plane which are at a fixed distance from a fixed point in the plane. The fixed point is called the center of the circle and the fixed distance is called the radius of the circle. Remember the line segment joining the center and any point on the circle is also called a radius of the circle. That is, radius is used in two senses, in the sense of a line segment and also in the sense of its length. A circle on the plane divides into three parts, the exterior of a circle, the circle itself, and the interior of the circle. The circle and the interior together comprise the circular region occupied by the circle. If you take two points A and B on a circle, then the line segment AB is called a chord of the circle. A chord which passes through the center of the circle is called the diameter of the circle. As in the case of radius, the word diameter is also used in two senses, that is, as a line segment and also as its length. Another interesting part is that the diameter of the circle is equal to twice the length of the radius of the circle. Do you find any other chord of the circle longer than the diameter? No. You see that a diameter is the longest chord of a circle. The diameter is a special chord. It has some interesting properties. A diameter divides a circle into two equal parts. Each is called a semicircle. Now take two points anywhere on the circle. A piece of a circle between two points is called an arc. Look at the pieces of the circle between two points A and B. Now, is there only one way to move from A to B? Actually, there are two. The longer one is called the major arc AB and the shorter one is called the minor arc AB. The minor arc AB is also denoted by arc AB and the major arc AB by arc ACB, where C is some point on the arc between A and B. As mentioned earlier, the diameter divides the circle into two equal arcs called semicircle. The length of the complete circle is called the circumference of the circle. In this figure, AB is a chord of the circle. Chord AB divides the circle into two regions. The smaller region is the minor segment and the larger region is the major segment. A segment of a circle is the region between the arc of the circle and the chord joining the endpoints of the arc. The region between an arc and the two radii joining the center to the endpoints of the arc is called a sector. The major arc forms larger or major sector. The minor arc forms the smaller of the minor sector. Angle subtended by a chord at a point. Let's take a line segment AB and take a point B not on the line containing AB. What is the angle subtended by the line segment AB at point P? The only way to find this is to join AP and PB. 
then angle APB is called the angle subtended by the line segment AB at the point P. Now draw a circle with center O and take any two points on the circle A and B and join AB. We know that the line segment AB joining the two points on the circle is called as a chord. What's the angle subtended by chord AB at O? To find this, join AO and OB. Therefore, the angle subtended by chord at center O is angle AOB. In the same circle with the same chord AB, take two points P and Q on the circle. What's the angle subtended by a chord AB at point P? Similarly, what's the angle subtended by a chord AB at point Q? To find out the angle subtended at P, join AP and BP. Similarly, to find out angle subtended at Q, join AQ and BQ. This gives the angle subtended by a chord AB at point P as angle APB and angle subtended at Q is angle AQB. Now let's see theorems using the above discussion. Equal chords of a circle subtend equal angles at the center. We have a circle with center O. Draw two equal chords, say AB and CD. Join OA, OB, OC and OD. Angle AOB is equal to angle COD. In triangle AOB and COD, OA is equal to OC. Since OA and OC are the radii of the circle, OB is equal to OD. Again, both are radii of the circle. Given AB is equal to CD. As per SSS congruence rule, triangle AOB is congruent to triangle COD. This gives angle AOB is equal to angle COD by corresponding parts of a congruent triangle. Now let's prove the converse of the above theorem. If the angles subtended by the chords of a circle at the center are equal, then the chords are equal. Given angle AOB is equal to angle COD, we need to prove that AB is equal to CD. In triangles AOB and COD, we have OA is equal to OC, since both are radii of the circle. Also, OB is equal to OD. Again, both are radii of the circle. Angle AOB is equal to COD is given. By SAS congruence rule, triangle AOB is congruent to triangle COD. Therefore, by corresponding sides of a congruent triangle are equal, we prove AB is equal to CD. Perpendicular from the center to a chord. The theorem which states that the perpendicular from the center of a circle to a chord bisects the chord. Consider a circle with center O, such that AC is the chord of the circle, OB is perpendicular drawn from O to AC. We need to prove that OB bisects the chord AC or divides it into two equal parts so that AB equals BC. Let's join the line OA and OC. Consider triangle OBA and OBC since OB is perpendicular to OC. Triangles OBA and OBC are two right angle triangles. Also, OA equals OC since both are radii of the circle. Notice OA and OC are the hypotenuse of the triangles OBA and OBC. OB is common to both the triangles, so by RHS congruence rule, triangles OBA and OBC are congruent. Congruent triangles have the corresponding sides equal, thus AB equals BC. Therefore, B is the midpoint of AC. This means line OB divides the chord AC, hence the theorem is proved. Now let's prove the converse of the theorem. Theorem states that the line drawn from the center of the circle to bisect a chord is perpendicular to the chord. Consider a circle with center O and chord AC. Let's draw a line OB such that it bisects AC. Now we have to prove that OB is perpendicular to AC. Let's join OA and OC. Consider triangles OBA and OBC. In these two triangles, it's given that AB equals BC since OB bisects AC. OA equals OC since both are radii of the same circle. OB is common to both the triangles. So the triangle OBA and OBC are congruent by SSS congruence rule. It also means angle OBA equals angle OBC 
since congruent triangles have the corresponding angles equal. Angle OBA and angle OBC are equal and together equal to the straight angle ABC, which equals 180 degrees. This means angle OBA and angle OBC are both right angles. This also means OB is perpendicular to AC. Circle through three points. How many circles can be drawn through this point? You can draw many circles as you like passing through this point. Now take two points A and B. You again see there may be an infinite number of circles passing through A and B. What will happen when you take three points A, B and C? Can you draw a circle passing through three collinear points? No. If the points lie on a plane, if the points lie on a line, then the third point will lie inside or outside the circle passing through the two points. So let us take three points A, B and C, which are not on the same line or in other words, they are not collinear. Join A, B and B, C. Now draw a line L which is perpendicular bisector of A, B. Similarly, draw a line M which is perpendicular bisector of B, C. Notice the line L and M will intersect at some point O. Join O, A, O, B and O, C. Now we know if we take any point on the perpendicular bisector of A, B, that point will be equidistant from both A and B. O is the unique point. It lies on line L, since line L is the perpendicular bisector of line AB. So, OA is equal to OB. Denote this as equation 1. Also, O lies on the line M. Line M is nothing but a perpendicular bisector of BC. So, OB is equal to OC. Denote this as equation 2. Therefore, from equation 1 and 2, we get OA is equal to OB is equal to OC. We see that O is such a point that is equidistant from all the points A, B and C. So, we can draw a circle with center O and radius OA that will pass through B and C. Finally, we say that O is the unique point, that is the point of intersection of perpendicular bisector of A, B and B, C and we saw that OA is equal to OB is equal to OC. So, we prove the theorem. There is one and only one circle that passes through all three non-collinear points. Equal chords and their distance from the center. Look at the circle. Let's draw two chords which are equidistant from the center of the circle. If you don't know the center of the circle, would it be possible to draw the chords that are equidistant from the center? Yes, it's possible. Let's see how. If we measure the chords, we find both the measurements are congruent. This means the chords which are equidistant from the center will be equal in length. So even if we don't know the center and you draw congruent chords anywhere inside the circle, they will be equidistant from the center. Based on this observation, we arrive upon a theorem. Equal chords of a circle are equidistant from the center of the circle. In this figure, we have two equal chords AB and PQ. Let's draw perpendiculars from the center O to the chords AB and PQ. The perpendiculars are OM and ON, which also represents the distance between the center and the chords. To verify the theorem, we'll prove that OM is equal to ON. Now measure OM and ON using a ruler. We can see OM is equal to ON. This proves that equal chords of the circle are equidistant from the center of the circle. Now let's see the converse of the theorem. It states that chords equidistant from the center of a circle are equal in length. Look at the circle. Mark two points at an equal distance from the center O. Now draw chord AB passing through M and perpendicular to OM. Next draw a chord PQ passing through N and perpendicular to OM. We need to prove that OM is equal to ON, then AB is equal to PQ. Now let us measure chords AB and PQ to see if they are equal. First, let us measure AB, next we will measure PQ. Simple measurement shows that chords AB and PQ are equal. You just proved that chords at an equal distance from the center of the circle are equal in length. Summary Let's summarize the topic. A circle is defined as the collection of all the points in a plane which are at a fixed distance from a fixed point in the plane. 
equal chords of a circle subtend equal angles at the center. If the angles subtended by two chords of a circle at the center are equal, the chords are equal. The perpendicular from the center of a circle to a chord bisects the chord. The line drawn through the center of a circle to bisect a chord is perpendicular to the chord. There is one and only one circle passing through three non-collinear points. Equal chords of a circle are equidistant from the center. Chords equidistant from the center of a circle are equal.